I'm often asked about what does the research show about gamification versus traditional instruction? And the interesting thing about that question is it's the wrong question. I don't really think we should be saying, is gamification better than this? Is this better than this? We've seen lots of studies about that. And actually, it turns out that sometimes gamification is good and sometimes it's not so good. In fact, I saw one meta-analysis, which is a study of studies, that looked at 23 studies of gamification for learner performance. It found that nine of those studies positive impact, 12 no real difference between traditional and gamification, and two, actually a negative impact. So why the difference? Why are some really good, some really bad, and some kind of in the middle? Well, it turns out what we should be looking at from a gamification perspective, from a research perspective, is when gamification is effective, what makes it effective? That's really the question we should be asking, and then implementing those effective elements into our gamified solutions. And it turns out other researchers have discovered three critical areas that make gamification effective in situations, different situations. So one of the things that they looked at was system quality. So the overall gamification system has to be designed at a quality level, and we'll go into some of those details. The second thing that they found were the learner attributes. It turns out, and this should not be a surprise to anyone, that learners who have had previous experience playing games are more prone to gamification. They tend to do better, so that makes sense. And then the third thing, and this is really critical, is that the gamified systems that were successful matched the affordance of the gamification dynamics, such as progress or awarding of points or achievements with the desired learning outcomes. They embedded the right gamification into the right outcomes. So they made that match. And that's really, I think, very critical and very important. So let's look at all three of those in a little bit more depth. So let's look at the design of the system. The design of the system has to have certain critical or key elements to make sure that the system's effective. And the first, it seems really silly, but it's system quality, right? The functionality has to work every time. It has to be reliable. It has to do its job. So your basic system functionality, very important. Second is the information in the system has to be accurate, relevant, timely. So if you have a gamified system and the information is not accurate or it's not timely, nobody cares. So you have to have that type of element. The next is you have to manage learner expectations. So when you hear the word gamification or I hear the word gamification, we might have different expectations. So as you're launching a gamified solution, you have to set the right expectations. And if you do that, you'll be successful. Another attribute that the system has to have is the system has to have general pickup or social use. So if you have social elements in your gamified solution, but only two people join the gamified solution or participate in the gamified solution, <laughs> you're not really going to have a lot of success in the social aspects. So it's that pickup or getting initial people involved in the system that makes the gamified system effective. So you really need to think about that from a gamification implementation perspective. So those system elements, and finally, uh, the overall, uh, the last element is the overall look and feel. It has to feel like it, it is enjoyable to the users. Um, some users, for example, I always say, if you're working with engineers, you know, you don't want to be too fancy full or too crazy. But if you're working with uh, creatives, you can take a little bit more liberty. So the feel of the system to the users has to feel right, if you will. And you need to know that through the culture of the organization that you're implementing the gamified solution. And some of that comes, as I said before, with managing those expectations. So that's the system elements. The user elements, as I said before, is you have to be familiar with games that help. So you're like, well, an organization, people aren't familiar. What do I do? Well, one of the things we've done in some organizations is done um, free time Friday. So we've said, OK, every Friday for one hour or for half an hour, you get to play games. And we do that before we implemented gamification. And when we implemented it, people were used to it and comfortable with it and knew what to expect. So free time Friday is a good technique to use if you want to help people get comfortable with gamification. The other thing about the users is 
The research has found that the users who participated in the design of the system or gave input into the design of the system actually were more happy with the system once it was implemented. So give users a time to do that and they'll be more comfortable with the system. And then the third element is actually matching the game affordances, you know, gamification bits and pieces. You take the right piece, for example, maybe race to the finish if you're in an environment where you have to do things quickly. If you're in an environment where accuracy is important, you've got to match a gamified element like accuracy to what the learner does in the system. Otherwise, they'll be incongruent and it won't make sense. Well, you want me to do everything fast, but on my job, you want it to be accurate, so I don't understand this difference between you know the forcing of, of speed when really accuracy is more important. So you have to match them together, and if you do that, you'll have a good gamified solution. So the research shows adding those three elements together, system design, considerations of the user, and matching the affordances will help you be successful in your gamification.